Good morning. This is me 20 years ago, uh, s uh, lieutenant in the 25th Infantry Division, and I had an experience there during a training exercise that I want to share with you that changed my life. Uh, I was a junior officer. <coughs> it was 3 in the morning. I was a communications officer, and we provided support to the entire division's worth of communications. And around 3 in the morning, one by one, every single link in the network went from green to red. It went down. So, so by 3, nobody in the whole division could talk. And I was you know, somewhat responsible for this. <laughs> and it got so bad where what we were discussing amongst ourselves was like, I, th I think we need to wake the colonel up. You know, I think we need to go let the colonel know that this is happening. And we decided, yes, we need to do that. And then somehow it was decided that the junior officer needed to go do this. So it fell upon me, you know, knock, knock, knock. Ma'am, I'm, I'm so sorry to wake you up, but things are really bad. <laughs> and she got up. She came in for a briefing. And as we showed her all of the red links, she kind of wiped, wiped her eyes and looked at it and took it all in and had this very serious face. And the only thing she said as she took all this in was she literally poked me in the chest. And she said, Unfuck this, Lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> and then she walked out. She just left, right? And that moment, it's like, okay, right? And note what she didn't do, right? She didn't like kick a garbage can across the room and ask whose fault it was or spend any time in blame or criticism. And, and even more remarkable, she didn't say, well, if I have to do something right, it's, I have to do it myself, right? Like, and, and get in and micromanage us. She, she gave us permission to fix this. And what I've realized is that I've spent the majority of my, my adult life un unfucking things. <laughs> and and uh, uh, the, the first thing is in 2003, I was hired to reduce street homelessness in this neighborhood right here by two-thirds in three years. And I walked the streets for a couple hours last night, and I didn't see a single person sleeping outside. So, so knock wood, it's sticking. We got it down by 87%. I was uh, uh, hired by Community Solutions to do that. And, and the way we got it down by 87% was housing people that nobody believed could possibly be housed. So it, it really turned the way that street outreach was done upside down and on its head. And I used some human intelligence uh, operative techniques. But mostly, we knew everyone by name. And we focused on the people who had been out there the longest, who were at the highest risk for dying. People like this. This is Ed Givens. He'd been on the streets for 30 years. He was literally drunk when we took this picture. Right? Drunk most of the time, many severe health conditions, and nobody who worked in the human services believed that Ed Givens could be housed. Well, Ed Givens did want to be housed, and through the techniques that we created, he, he was housed by Skid Row Housing Trust, and this began to catch on. And at one point we said, gosh, what if we could house 100,000 Ed Givenses? Wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't that be something? So we launched a movement to house 100,000 of the very most vulnerable people on the streets. And this June, on June 9th, the 100,000th person moved off of the streets and into housing in a national movement to do this. So uh, we, the White House threw us a party and, and, uh, and threw the party for all the communities that had done this. And Ed Givens was there. That's Ed Givens. All right, so this is the kind of change that I know in my bones is possible in the world. And I want to share you some things about that. So first of all, I want to tell you about how much experience I had in homelessness when I started this. That's right. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it, right? I didn't know anything about it. So don't hold yourself back if you don't have experience in something. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're a leader. The thing that I heard most often, and some of you might have said this to people, so you're going to feel bad, but that's OK. I'm going to tell you what else to say, is you do such good things. Gosh, that is so wonderful. You do these great things. I feel like they were like patting me on the head, kind of. you know, And it, and it keeps you kind of a little bit of a distance Right? Like, oh, those people do good things, right? But I have my other job where I don't go do good things. And I feel somewhat ambivalent about that, but I'm just going to continue as I am, right? <laughs> That's what happens. And, and one of the things that, that has stuck with me forever is this guy, Dr. Paul Farmer, who was actually in Haiti when I was there. He was just revolutionizing health care for poor people. He said, we're not doing good things. We're undoing bad things. That's what we're doing. And, and I really, that resonated with me. And I've created a company with my friend Joe called the Billions Institute. And our mission is to engage at least a billion people to solve the world's biggest problems in the next 50 years. Right? And so what that is, is undoing a lot of bad things. So there's a lot of bad things that need to be undone. 
pollution, climate change. Look at these penguins. This is awful, right? <laughs> School shootings. This is a, I have a seven-month-old. This one totally freaks me out. Hungry kids. Um, a disease disproportionately affecting poor people. The average age that a young girl enters into commercial sex trade, usually not willingly, is 13, right? This is, there's, some, some, there's some real serious things that need to be undone in our world. And I've been training with Dr. Kathleen Hendricks for three years, and I have three questions that I've learned from her that I want to pass along to you so that the next time you encounter something that you really want to get undone, this is going to help you channel your energy into something that's really going to make the world a better place. So the first question is, what do you really want? And this is sneaky, because this is a really, really powerful question that challenges someone to step into a creative space, right? What do you really want? Now, when I ask this question, mostly what people say is what they don't want, right? And the universe doesn't know how to respond to what people don't want. Or they complain, or they blame, or this is really bad. The key to this is to ask yourself and other people again and again and again, no, what do you really want? What do you want to create in this situation? By when? It's a very powerful question. The next thing is, what are you willing to let go of? And when I'm talking about this, usually when I say, what are you willing to let go of, people kind of apply the Jesus standard, right? Which is, it's easier for a rich man to get in heaven than a camel to get through the eye of the needle. I'm not really talking about that. What I'm talking about is, what are you willing to let go of in terms of fixed beliefs that aren't working for you anymore, right? Limiting beliefs, ways of looking at the world. So mostly when we look at things like that, we look for someone to blame. Right? It's the Republicans' fault. It's the Democrats' fault. I don't know whose fault it is. We have this limiting belief that one person can't make a difference. I know for sure that's not true. Every single person in this room is making a difference and can make an even bigger difference. And the next question is, what really lights your heart up? And think about it like E.T., right, with a little, little glowing heart. Like what really lights up your heart? Because what the world needs, I believe, is for everyone here to give yourself a permission slip, kind of like the colonel did, right, to, to Find the thing that is most that really touches you the most of what's going on in the world. Get really clear on what you want. Let go of your limiting beliefs that you can't do something. And find a way to contribute in that that just really lights up your heart. And if we do that together, we're going to be able to unfuck a whole bunch of really big things together. So <laughs> thank you.